Alex here with a video on high conflict child custody. I'm going to cover the topic of stop trusting the liar. So <laughs> this could be a legal nuts and bolts video, but most people don't have a problem with um, not trusting like a landlord or an employer they've sued. The thing people seem to have a problem with is trusting their ex after they've lied. And it's like, I've seen some of the most insane things. If your ex <sighs> files a restraining order on you, if your ex sues you for child custody, if your ex files a complaint for divorce, and they go to court and they lie, don't trust them anymore. You know, I've even seen, okay, I've even seen, <laughs> I've even seen exes, like, I've seen a, a, a person file a restraining order. This was the guy, he filed a restraining order on his, his girlfriend. And then when the court came, he was standing there by the courtroom with like a bouquet of roses. And he withdrew his restraining order petition. And that was supposed to like make her happy. Anyway, she did go back with go back and be with him. This kind of stuff is severely dysfunctional. A person doesn't file a restraining order on you and then show up with roses and withdraw and tell you, let's get back together. Other cases where people will file like a petition for child custody just to scare their ex, and then they'll withdraw it on the condition that they can get back together. And then their ex gets back with them because they're scared of court. This stuff is so insanely bad. If this happens to you and you and you think you can have a future with this person, you need to reevaluate your way of thinking as to how relationships work. As I mentioned, this is severely dysfunctional. People don't go and sue each other in court and then get back together. This is not normal. Anyway, <laughs> there's I can't help laughing because it's like once your ex lies in court, okay, let's set aside all that other stuff I said about restraining orders and withdrawing them and getting back together. God, man, this is the end. The restraining order is the end. Stop trusting them. Anyway, taking aside the people who withdraw their stuff, there's still an issue with people who've been lied, lied about in court, in the courtroom, and then they'll do things later on that indicate trust. You just don't, you know, you need just play it safe. If the, if you're with a person who's gone so far as to lie in court, and then they tell you, okay, here's a few examples of where I've seen this blow up in people's faces. A girl, we'll say this time it's a, it's a wife or, or a, a girlfriend. She gets a restraining order, and then like a few weeks later, she tells the guy, um, I changed my mind, you can come to my house. And then she calls the cops on him and then hits him with domestic violence, and then gets primary physical custody. This happens. It's like, stop. Stop for a second. Your ex got a restraining order against you, and she lied. Don't trust her and go to her house. It's like, stop doing crazy, dumb stuff. There's this. I see this so much. It's not like it's just like one person. It's like a lot of people. Um, other times... Somebody will trust their ex and pay them cash in child support. And then later on, when they're mad at them, they lie and say they didn't get it. And then they'll they'll have them thrown in jail for contempt of court, for not paying child support, or get like uh, their wages garnished. It's like, hold on a second. If she lied about you one time in court, she can lie about you again. Don't trust them anymore. Find another person to trust. Find somebody new to go out with. Stop trusting this other person who's betrayed you in one of the worst possible ways. This is like how abusers win. They just trick you into just doing really dumb stuff. Don't do that. There's another, there's um, my ex actually, she didn't succeed on this one, but she'd have, she had like alleged from the very beginning that I was like a harasser and abuser. And then there she shows up at a doctor's appointment and I'm like, here, you can, you know, take our son into the appointment. I'll just wait out here. She's like, no, I want you to come too. I'm like, seriously? This is the person who said, like, I'm a horrible, horrible person and I'm dangerous. And she wants me to go in this tiny little room with just her. Because you know that while you're waiting for the doctor to show up, it's just, it's just a patient in there. You know, nobody sits in there with you. So I'm like, no, that's okay. You just take him. And she kept insisting. And I'm just thinking, after I lived, after I leave that appointment... If I would have gone in there, she would have probably said that I, like, punched her or choked her or something. It's like, wait, if your ex is alleging that you're violent, 
Don't let them put you into a situation where it's your word versus theirs and they can say you're violent. It's like, think, think, think before you do stuff. Um, before you trust them, just keep them. Once somebody lies in court, the relationship has changed and will never go back to the way it was. Lying in court, it's unforgivable and it's a crime. And it's like, you're they're altering your rights based on the lies that they're telling. So it's just, you know, going forward, don't do it. In my case, I actually asked for something called a no contact order because, um, once she alleged that I was the abuser, I, I wanted the no contact order because I didn't want to be anywhere near her because I didn't want her to allege it again. Um, if in case anyone's wondering, this stuff about the abuse, I already won that. I went to the Supreme Court of Nevada. They published a case. They named it after me, Falcone v. Secretary of State. You can watch If you check my profile on YouTube, you can click that link and read about that and um, find out how I was able to change the law when it came to abusing... The statutes that are supposed to be there for actual victims of domestic violence and all that. Um, again, I'm going to cover no contact orders in another video. It's kind of going to be its own topic, but I'm going to end this video now. I don't know what else there is to say about it. If somebody has betrayed your trust to the level of going to the court system and doing it, stop trusting them. Don't trust them ever again. I don't care how many years it's been. I don't care how much they've changed. You don't need to get this person to, you don't need to give them your trust. There's so many other people in your life that you're going to meet as you're growing, as you're developing, as you're becoming more mature, five, six, seven, eight years later, you, you, you're going to meet all kinds of other people to trust. You don't need to go back and trust this person who lied about you because if you think they're not going to do it again, you, maybe you'll be right. Maybe you won't. Why play with fire? Just cover your butt. Pay child support with a check. Pay it over the phone using a credit card. <laughs> Don't go into areas where you can be accused of domestic violence if somebody's lied about it before, you know? And don't get back with somebody who f puts a restraining order on you and then withdraws it. It's like, no, this is not, this is like, this is like severe. This is like the 10th degree of actions somebody can take after a breakup. There is no going back. You can't trust this person ever again. And... If you do, you're gonna. Get, it's gonna come back to bite you in court, and I've seen it happen so many times that I'm doing a video on it now because it's starting to drive me kind of crazy. <laughs> so it's like, <sighs> I hope people take this to heart and spread it. And <sighs> some of the things I've, I've heard and seen are just nuts. So anyway, with that, I'll go ahead and end this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below and hit the like button.